Hey guys, it's Paul here at Impulsive Culinary, and in this video, I want to talk to you about a recipe that you have to make at least once in your lifetime. What a satisfying treat this is. It's beef bourguignon. So I remember the very first time that I made beef bourguignon, and I was there, and my bottle of wine, oh, pour the whole thing in. What an experience. Uh, it's a lot of fun to dump a bottle of wine into a recipe. Now, I'm a firm believer that you should only ever use wine that you would drink when you're cooking. That's, that's a steadfast rule. I'll never change that. However, having said that, um, I don't believe in you know, going overboard and buying you know, some $30 bottle of wine. I mean, that would be a waste, I find. Okay, so what am I going to be using in this recipe? This is a bottle of homebrew, this bottle of your own wine, all right? So we have a couple of cases of this kicking around in our cellar. And uh, I don't mind using this five, six dollar bottle, which is good nonetheless. I mean, it's one of the higher quality bottle of your own wines, okay? Uh, with, the, with the grape peels and all that stuff, it's pretty good. And so I've had this before and I know it tastes good, so I'm confident using it as an ingredient. But at the cost, I mean, you can't beat the price, right? So that's the bottle that I'm going to be using in this recipe. Now, other than that, here are the other ingredients that you need for this boeuf bourguignon. Go visit your butcher and get yourself a half of a pound of good bacon, okay? The good stuff, the butcher bacon. Also, while you're there, don't forget to pick up three pounds of lean chuck beef. Now, ask them if they can give you a lean cut. Normally, this stuff's already cut into two-inch cubes because, you know, not surprisingly, this, this recipe gets made a lot, okay? So they have that for sure. If you're going to a good butcher, get three pounds of that. You're going to need a quarter cup of dairy-free margarine, two carrots, which you're going to thinly slice, six French shallots, which you're also going to thinly slice, four cloves of garlic, which you're going to finely chop, two tablespoons of corn flour, two tablespoons of tomato paste, one bottle of your best homebrew red wine, <laughs> okay, two cups of mushroom broth, a couple of bay leaves, a few sprigs of fresh thyme, and then uh, purely as a garnish, as an optional ingredient, you should get yourself two pounds of mushrooms. All right, that's what you need. So this is a very special recipe. And when you're done, you want to take this beautiful melange of meat and wine broth, and I would serve it in a platter, surrounded, no less, by some uh, beautiful roasted potatoes, okay? Um, and topped with those mushrooms, which I told you are optional. So that's the goal. We're going to make a beautiful beef bourguignon platter. Let's get cooking. Beef bourguignon. Mwah! It just rolls off the tongue. What a delicious recipe. I love making this, and uh, it's always fun to go to the butcher and say, I'm making beef bourguignon. Oh, no problem. Here you go. Here's your beef. So you've picked up three pounds of cubed chuck beef, hopefully lean, and it's already cut, guys, in big two-inch chunks like this. They've got a rack of it all ready to go. You really don't have to do much. You can always get a chuck roast yourself and trim it and all that, but you do tend to pay for, you know, a little bit of extra fat. So it's entirely up to you. Talk to your butcher. Be friends with your butcher, okay? Now, what I recommend that you do is when you've come home with this beautiful chuck meat, you want to dry it off. So get out a couple of big pieces of paper towel and take the time to dry off the meat. And the reason for that is if it's wet, you can't brown it. You want to brown this stuff. So you definitely want to take the time to dry it out. Go right ahead. Dry out your beef. So once you've got your beef cubes nicely padded and dried out with some paper towel, get them into a large mixing bowl and season generously with some salt and some freshly ground black pepper. Oh, those look beautiful. Nice big two inch chunks of chuck beef seasoned with some freshly ground black pepper and a bunch of kosher salt. I toss that around so it's nice and combined. Okay, so now your beef is seasoned and dried. Put that aside and get yourself a great big cast iron Dutch oven. Preferably something with a nice heavy lid. Now, you've seen this one in my other videos. I use it all the time. I was gifted this many years ago and I love to use it. You gotta get yourself a Dutch oven that's big enough to hold all of the meat and all the vegetables and the broth that you're gonna be putting in here. So something around this size should be more than enough. Get that on your stovetop over medium high heat. So while your Dutch oven is warming up on the stovetop, get your half pound of beautiful butcher bacon, and you wanna slice this sort of just on the length like that to make a bunch of matchsticks of bacon, okay? So slice away with a good sharp knife. So the first thing we're gonna cook is the bacon, and just to help get it started, we're gonna put a little splash of olive oil into the Dutch oven while it's warming up. Get the bacon into the pan. So just a little note about the broth. Mushroom broth, awesome flavor, okay? And that's what I've used primarily when I'm making beef bourguignon. You can use beef broth, vegetable broth, chicken broth, 
It's better if it's a dark broth. Mushroom broth is a great candidate. Flavorful, dark color, and really goes well with this recipe. So whatever broth you're choosing, okay, if it's frozen like ours, put it in a small saucepan right now and warm it up so that it's ready to go when you need it. Beef bourguignon, so good. It starts with bacon. How can you go wrong with any recipe that starts with bacon, right? So after five, maybe six or seven minutes, guys, you're going to see your bacon is just starting to get really nice and toasty like that. Not quite fully crisp, but certainly cooked. Uh, so you want to take all of that out with a slotted spoon, put it in a, in a separate bowl and set it aside, but keep all of that beautiful bacon fat in there for the beef part that's about to come. Scoop out the bacon. Okay, so set your bacon aside, and now let's use that beautiful bacon fat to brown each of those cubes of meat. So this is a fast process, guys. You don't want to let them cook for more than a minute or so on each side. And when you do, you're going to get that beautiful browning. That's exactly what you want. Then you flip it, and you make sure to do them in small batches so that they're not touching each other. So the goal is not to cook them through, just to give them a nice brown crust on all sides. And the bits that stay in the bottom of the pan, pure flavor, okay? So we're gonna deglaze that with the next part that comes with the vegetables. And this is gonna taste so good. Whew, brown meat, smoky kitchen. That smells fantastic. Now that you're done browning the beef cubes, your work with the bacon fat is done. And this stuff really, all it's gonna do is congeal and it's not that healthy. It's great for flavor, okay, and it's done its job. So now what you want to do is you want to spoon out any of the excess bacon fat, put it in a heat safe bowl, set it aside to let cool and dispose of safely, and we're going to replace that with some healthier stuff. So I've managed to spoon out the bacon fat, guys. I've got in a heat proof container. I'm going to dispose of that safely. But that, all that good brown stuff at the bottom, that is pure gold. That is excellent flavor right there. So we're going to slowly deglaze that and keep it as part of our stew. Okay, so now you want to reduce the heat from medium high down to medium. And then before putting the Dutch oven back on the heat, chop up your carrots into some small thin slices uh, and your dry French shallots. You want to slice up all of those nice and thin. Then you can put your Dutch oven back on the heat. Okay, carrots and onions are sliced thin. Now it's time to get four tablespoons or around a quarter cup of dairy-free margarine into the pan. I'm always a little heavy-handed on the margarine. <laughs> okay, so with your margarine bubbling away, get your onions and your carrots into the pan. So margarine is not going to deglaze your pan, but the moisture and the humidity coming out of the vegetables is going to start to slowly deglaze. So get a good sturdy spoon and stir those vegetables around in the margarine while scraping the bottom of the pan slowly. You're going to get all of that beautiful flavor into the vegetable mixture. So that slow process of the moisture coming from your vegetables, you're slowly going to see that the bottom of your pan is going to become clear. And all of that beautiful dark brown flavor from the meat and the bacon earlier is going to stay in this vegetable mixture. Whoa, and it smells fantastic. So while those carrots and onions are cooking away, get yourself four or five cloves of garlic and chop them up as finely as you can. So when you see that the carrots and the onions are just, just starting to brown the slightest little bit, that's the time that you want to add in your garlic and cook it for another minute or so. Let's get the garlic in. So once the garlic has been in there for a minute or two and it's not so raw anymore, that's when you want to get a couple of tablespoons of corn flour. You can use, well, white rice flour, any gluten-free flour that you want. I prefer corn, so get two tablespoons of that into the pot. Now you want to stir that flour around to make sure there's no lumps and everything is nice and thoroughly combined. So once your flour has had a chance to cook and not taste so flour-like, okay, get a couple of generous tablespoons of tomato paste into the pan. So here's a very happy medley of flavors in here, the flavor base of what's going to be most incredible broth ever of our beef bourguignon. Oh, so I think we're ready to add a little bit of wine in here. So any sauce that starts with a thickener, you want to add a little bit of liquid first just to get all of that process going. So same applies here. There's around three cups or over three cups of, uh, of liquid in this bottle of wine. So you want to add around a third of it first and uh, whisk together what's in the pot already with that one cup of wine just to get the process started. The best part, in goes the wine. So make sure to really stir well with your whisk and get all of those great flavors unstuck from the bottom of the pan. 
Now you really want to deglaze properly. So adding that first cup of wine is so crucial to be able to make sure to get all of those great flavors unstuck from the bottom of the pan. You'll feel it when you're using your whisk when it starts to give no resistance. That means that you've gotten all of that good flavors unstuck. That means you can add the rest of the wine. Tilt the bottle and don't stop. Yeah, man. That's the most luxurious soup ever. Right? <laughs> so now it's time to get your bacon and your beef into this lovely wine mixture. And be sure to include all of the juices and the drippings that have accumulated in your bowl. Always get that into the mixture as well. Ho ho ho! See, it is here. So there we go. We've got our beautiful mixture complete. Okay, all of the beef and the bacon is in there. So you just want to lightly push everything down to make sure that your liquid covers all of the meat. Okay, and that's where the broth comes in. Depending if you've been a little bit generous with the meat when you're at the butcher, you might have some beef that's sort of surfacing over the top of the liquid. That's where you want to add broth as necessary. Okay, the broth is just there as a secondary measure to make sure that everything is submerged. As you can see, with my bottle of wine and the amount of beef that I'm using, I'm pretty good. I don't think I need any mushroom broth at all. But if you did, it's always good to have it there just in case. So as if this concoction wasn't flavorful enough, all right, let's top it up a little bit more. So I'm going to add two bay leaves and just a little handful of uh, sprigs of fresh thyme. I'm going to put all of that just on the top. And by leaving the sprigs intact and these big bay leaves, they're going to be easy to take out before I go to serve the dish. Put them in the pot. So there we've got some bay leaves and fresh herbs on top of this beautiful concoction, okay? Um, when it just starts to bubble like this, it's a gentle simmer. That's when you want to turn the heat down to low, all right, just above low. And you want to get a cover on this and let it cook undisturbed for four hours. Yeah! Cover it up. Bye-bye! So four hours is ample opportunity to prepare all of the other stuff that goes along with this recipe. Now, I love to serve this in a platter served in a wreath of roasted potatoes. So delicious. And who doesn't like roasted potatoes? So I'll put a link to that recipe up here. That's a great compliment to the beef bourguignon. Also, I love to top this beef with some uh, sautéed mushrooms, all right, which you can do in a, a bunch of different ways. But the easiest is just to take four little packs or two pounds of mushrooms, cut them into uh, fair sized cubes, saute them in a skillet with a little bit of margarine, add some fresh herbs or whatever you want to make them uh, Provençal, uh, very French, and just so you know, scatter those on top of the, of the beef bourguignon when it's out on the platter. Whoa, I am salivating just thinking about it, okay? I need to take a break. See you in four hours. So four hours has expired. The beeper went off around 20 minutes ago, and I don't mind keeping that beef bourguignon just on a low simmer in the Dutch oven. It can stay there for another hour for all I care. Uh, the beef is nice and tender, and uh, I haven't looked yet. I just know from having it made it before. But we're gonna look at that together. We're gonna take a first peek soon. First, I wanna tell you what have I done in the meantime. In the oven, I've got warming right now. Uh, I made a batch of my roasted potatoes, okay, to uh, garnish the platter. So they're just in a casserole dish, keeping warm until I'm ready for them. I've also taken my two pounds of mushrooms and I've sort of cubed them up into a, into a large dice. And that's what I want to saute right now so that we can garnish the top of our beef bourguignon platter. So get a nonstick skillet. I've got this weirdo one here, kind of like a wok, but a large nonstick skillet will do. Let's get that over medium high heat. So when the skillet is nice and hot, Get three or four tablespoons of dairy-free margarine in there so you can saute your mushrooms. All right, get the mushrooms in the pan. The goal is to brown them, but you want to get a little bit of that moisture out as well. So throw in some seasonings. So adding your salt and pepper early is a surefire way to get those mushrooms to give up their water and boil off all that moisture. And once that's done, then you get in the business of sauteing them and browning them just a little bit. Okay, so the water is almost all gone. You just want to give this a toss and saute it for another couple of minutes just until the mushrooms start to get a little bit brown. So a couple of minutes or so after all of the water is evaporated, you're going to see some beautiful browning on some of those mushrooms. That means that they're pretty much done. Another minute or two, give that a toss, and then they're considered ready. Mm, they smell great. So get those in a heat safe bowl, put them aside so that we can start assembling our platter. All right, so the moment of truth. Let's get this beef bourguignon into a platter and presentable. 
So my serving platter of choice for beef bourguignon is a large shallow bowl, okay? Enough to hold all of that juice and a nice wide lip so that I can stack up all of my potatoes on the side and dump mushrooms on the top. A great big bowl, basically, okay? Let's have a look at the beef. All right, let's reveal this together, guys. Oh, what a smell. Wow, what a smell. Oh my goodness, amazing. Still bubbling away, simmering just gently. It's been on the lowest possible heat for almost, yeah, well, it's four and a half hours now. Uh, it's been simmering for a while. I'm going to bet money that that beef is super tender. Okay, so next step. What a smell. It is amazing. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get the beef by itself using a slotted spoon into the warm serving platter. And of course, I want to take out the sprigs of thyme and the two bay leaves and put those in the compost. So all I'm left with is the beef and the broth. Okay, all bay leaves and thyme sprigs accounted for. Let's go fishing. Oh, -ho! oh the transfer is nearly complete. Look at that beautiful dish of stewed meat and carrots and onions and bacon. Gorgeous. And what's left is basically just the sauce. Now we're going to get this back onto the stovetop. Okay, so get that Dutch oven back onto the stovetop and turn up the heat to medium high. So while you're getting your broth up onto the high heat, there's nothing wrong with tenting the beef with a little piece of tin foil just to keep it nice and warm. And then if you've got your oven on keep warm, get that in there for now. So if you'll remember guys, we took the time to take out that bacon fat when we were done browning our meat. And as a result, there's no skimming or anything that has to be done at this stage. What you're left with is just a beautiful, rich, luxurious broth. And by boiling it off a little bit like this, we're just going to reduce it a little bit and uh, give it enough consistency to coat the back of a spoon. Then you're going to have some serious, gorgeous gravy. Now is a great chance for you to correct the seasoning. Add a little bit of salt and pepper to your taste. Mmm. Bottle of wine never tasted so good. Doesn't need much. Literally, just a pinch of salt, a little bit of grating of pepper, and that's it. All right, so there's my lovely batch of roasted potatoes that I made earlier today, and that's been keeping warm in that casserole dish. It's gonna be a lovely garnish around the edge of my serving platter. And there's the infamous beef bourguignon, still steaming away now that I've covered it and kept it warm in the oven. And here is uh, now turned off the heat, but still boiling away the lovely broth. Now it's time to assemble the final package. Oh, not to forget the mushrooms. That's going on top as well. Let's get the mushrooms right on top of the beef. Next, it's time to get that sauce into the beef. So once you've put as much of that beautiful gravy into your serving platter as possible, then uh, double up with a gravy boat for the excess, because trust me, people are gonna wanna take this delicious wine reduction sauce and slather it over whatever else is in their plate, okay? So get the remainder into your gravy boat. Okay, the last step, guys. A wreath of roasted potatoes. What? As if it wasn't enough. Yeah, yeah, get some potatoes around the edge of that. Words can barely express my elation at the thought of this dish, okay? Let alone seeing it right here in front of me. Lovely roasted potatoes, and of course, inside this <laughs> incredibly tender and delicious roast chuck beef with mushrooms and bacon and a wine reduction sauce. What? Shut the door. And of course, lots of leftover gravy for anybody who wants to pour it on, all right? Guys, I highly recommend. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. And of course, optional, if you want, get a little bit of parsley and uh, sort of, you know, throw that on top just for, uh, just to show off. Oh, I'm tempted. I got to do the shot. Just there, right there. Okay, can you see it? Oh, hopefully I'm not tilting the gravy too much. And the only big difference that I've done, guys, between, you know, the traditional French standard of boeuf bourguignon and this recipe is that I've done it all on the stovetop. And by doing so, I've liberated the oven so you can make your wreath of potatoes or do whatever you like on that special occasion when oven space is at, you know, a premium, okay? So guys, my name is Paul from Impulsive Culinary. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I had a blast making it. I cannot wait to dig into this dish. It's late at night, but trust me, I'm having a second dinner tonight, absolutely. And uh, I think I'm gonna have some leftovers, all right? Safe to say. So if you've enjoyed this, guys, hit the like button. More importantly, hit that subscribe button. Brand new video every Saturday coming out here, guys. Always gluten-free, dairy-free, uh, because, you know, that's the kind of thing that we have to do for our family. So I hope it works for yours as well. Also, I invite you to join me on Wednesday nights. 
I do a live weekly update, get a brand new vintage, usually a red wine, and I love to open up a brand new bottle with you guys and share the impulsive culinarian news of the week. So here's a link to that. Join me on the live weekly Wines Day update. And of course, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you then, guys. I'll take a little bit of that. Get in my belly.